Joe, and today we're going to run over your Tabak Tayoke, which is your single stick warm ups. And I'm going to go over one more striking progression. If you've been following along, I did a single stick warm up on the asterisk, a striking progression of the basic 12 to 15 angles of attack under the Inasano Kali curriculum. I also did a Redondo series uh, using the same methodology, a couple of our other different circumstances and vehicles to really get the stick moving and some one-off combinations like the Amaran and that sort of thing, Abanico with Tick. And uh, this is just to kind of continue that idea of the asterisk and give you some warm-ups to do. So whenever you're walking around, even if you only have one tool, you can be ambidextrous with it. This goes into uh, also like using the nunchaku or flexible weapons where you might have a link or a chain in the middle. These are pretty much identical to those and they're interchangeable. In fact, it was Guru Dan and Asano who introduced the nunchucks to Sigong Bruce Lee and he was like, ah, it's not too practical, but it's flashy, so he used it for the movie. So first one you have is just roll. So when you roll, you wanna go next to the shoulder here this way. So I'm not trying to open out like this. I wanna keep my hand inside the body and I want the end of the stick to be able to come directly near my shoulder. And the more your wrist opens up, the better that'll get. But also I open my hand so that the little finger stays connected to the object. It doesn't separate like this, okay? So that's number one, you can just let it fall to the other hand. Number two is the same thing. So after two or three times, I'll switch back and forth. Except now I'm gonna use my hand at the top of the apex, the top of the circle, to fan it forward like that, okay? Two or three times, switch to the other side. Okay, so you have standard roll, you go backwards too, forward and backwards, forward with a fan, that's it. Okay, so just like this. The next one is a front stop, so I just put a brake on it in front, and then I'm gonna go. So just stop, continue, stop, continue, other side, fan, stop. This will become a combination later. So in the beginning, it's just kind of like, why am I stopping here? It doesn't really make any sense. But if you think about blocking, yeah, that's kind of the same mentality. You might put the brake on like that, okay? Then you do front and rear, okay? So again, this will kind of look exactly like the nunchaku, okay? So I can keep it in the same hand by just bouncing. Bounce, bounce, roll. Bounce, bounce, roll but I can also catch it underneath. Okay, now to make this easier, see I'm going over the tricep? This is actually a form of close quarter blocking too, whenever it's over the tricep like this. So you don't want to put it behind the shoulder. Also, you, uh, if you want to stretch, you can, but it's not combative. So if I go one and two over my shoulder, it can be hard to find the object that way. But if I go over my tricep, now it's very easy to secure it. Okay, so you can start to do some striking too, like maybe I hit to the leg, one, two, hit to the leg, and just, there's no set pattern here, so you can do five times in a row, you can front and rear stop and keep going, you can switch to the other side, oh, this time I'm gonna go back to the left hand, it doesn't really matter, okay? The idea is just to get moving. Then with this, you can start to put in like different footwork, so I could do like forward and rear replace, I could go back to just rolling forward, switching, go back to the fanning, front and rear stop. Okay, now with the fan or the forward roll, I'm gonna go under the armpit. My opposite hand is gonna go ahead of my thumb, so it's in my left hand. I basically let it fall, I let it wrap under the arm, and I extend the handle forward this way. Now my right arm is gonna go across like a cross tap, and it's gonna fall. See how my hands are in almost like an X shape down here. I'm just gonna elevate it and it's gonna become the umbrella or roof block. And then I like to do an angle one, you don't have to, but it just kind of gets me in the mindset of what I'm doing. So now I have a low switch where I hit low, then I have under the arm, extend, opposite hand on top, make the X, umbrella, and I hit high. So it doesn't switch, it stays in the same hand. So forward, front and rear, again, could be doing any kind of footwork, rear replace, triangle footwork, could go into like a downward X, ecus pattern, back to the rolling, just kind of really freelance. 
under, over, hit low, under, over, hit low, back under the arm, switch for the umbrella, back to the one. Now here's another one, okay? I extend, but my armpit holds the object and I switch grips. So now my left hand comes on top and I do the umbrella and now I come into the other side. So that is a hand change. So see here, if I, if I fan, if my right hand keeps it and my left goes under, it doesn't change hands. But if I let it go and let the armpit take over, now I switch and that is the adjustment for the other side. Okay, so you wanna do this in like four corners, add some striking, turn, you can work on everything we did before, maybe like Redondo, Tres Personas, switch hands, umbrella, Tres Personas again, Redondo, back to the rolling. I just kind of do this as a warm up, just like walking around, maybe Abanico with tick, back to the hand, back to the umbrella. Okay, the last one we'll do is instead of falling here at the waist and going under the arm, it's gonna fall completely down towards the shin and I'm gonna put it behind my back. Okay, now again, think about the tricep here. This is actually a counter, common counter to a snake disarm. Okay, so imagine a person wraps your arm up, right? Like a counterclockwise snake. So I put it behind my back and I grab the object here at the end and hit. So again, I fall to the leg, keep traveling, and it's over my tricep. So this gives me kind of two things. I don't have to have flexibility because it's right here and I can see it, right? This is in my vision right here. So there's no hesitation on grabbing and delivery. See, I go one, two, right, right here. One, right here, that's it. A lot of people go like this over their back. That's a great stretch to do. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna look to find the thing and you have to really reach, look at the tip of my elbow here. So now it's way behind my back. But if it's here, now it's directly in front of me very, very easily. So that's the last one in this series that I'll give you. So roll on itself, backward roll on itself. You wanna make these like pretty crisp, pretty fast, right? Forward, backward, forward with the fan, forward with the fan, front and rear stop, front and rear stop, or just front stop, just front stop, front and rear with a catch and hit low, now on the other side. Front and rear stop, just front stop, front and rear stop, front and rear with a catch, hit low. Under the arm, hand stays on, single umbrella. Under the arm, switch hands, umbrella on the other side, see? Under the arm, doesn't change, regular umbrella. Under the arm, switch, it'll be umbrella on the other side, okay? Which is no different than here, switching low. See, so tap it, I didn't switch. You could be tap it and hit, but tap and hit low, and then go, in whatever you're gonna do, right? Okay, here, switch back, that's it. Behind the back, grab, behind the back. We call it behind the back, but see it's really forward in front of me, so there's no question on where it is, right? If I do this, uh, where's it at, right? That's it. So that's your basic twirling, okay? So second segment in this video I wanna talk about is just transition. So a lot of times this is done with the knife I don't really like to teach the knife publicly on YouTube and give a lot of information on that, but we can use the stick. And if you're a dedicated student, you're gonna figure it out anyway, but at least you had to put some effort into it and uh, it goes with that, right? So I talked the other day about like six, seven, eight. See how these redondo lines? Eight to two, forehand thrust to angle one, backhand thrust to angle two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's gonna lead us into what we call the Floretti. So Floretti is a double strike. And with a blade, it could be point first and then edge, point and then edge. Same with the stick, see, thrust, edge. That's the tip, tip, and now the slashing portion. Tip, slashing portion there, one, two, one, two. So this helps you because if you get encumbered on something, you can rapidly switch the angle. And redondo is kind of no different. Maybe I miss, so the redondo comes back around. Miss, and comes back around. So uh, a big redondo or like bacalao, bacalao is like to hit through like this. I did it with a broom handle the other day, I think, or a garden tool. It was sunnier out, right? 
So if you saw that, see this is a lot of travel. The difference in the Floretti is it's mostly in the wrist. So an easy way to practice it is I'm going to hit the angle one. It's going to turn and look like a thrust. The wrist is going to take over and I'm going to slash. I'm going to hit the angle two. It's going to look like a thrust. The wrist is going to take over and then I slash. And what you notice, unlike the Redondo and the Bacalao, is it's not a big motion around my head, but it stays in front of the body, okay? There's a couple ways to warm this up. So an easy one is to go back to the asterisk and hit all angles of attack. So angle one to angle one, angle two to angle two, horizontal to horizontal, horizontal to horizontal, uppercut line, uppercut line like that. So that'll give you six different tracks. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, and then that could feed into your abanico, could feed into your thrust line, hooking line, whatever. The other way to warm it up is to really exercise the wrist. This isn't necessarily combative, but you just make continuous hooking motions. And there is a little validity in this, but uh, it's more to like get the rotation and dexterity out of the wrist because that's 100% in use in Kali all the time. Okay, so you hit the angle one and tip forward and you make like a circle down. See, so like one, two, three, four, five. Now I hit the angle two, one, two, three, four, five. Hit the angle three, one, two, three, four, five, four. So these small circles develop into large circles, but it's really just for dexterity, right? There's some short range hitting that will involve this but it's not necessarily combative. It's just to loosen up the wrist. Like even this first exercise on the Tabak Tayok, I found when I did it, I'm 40 now, but I've been doing Kali since I was like 10 years old. And uh, even in my teenage years, there were times I was like, man, my wrist is stiff today, I gotta warm it up. So that's what these are designed for. And I can hit the two this way and backhand down, see three, Forehand, 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 backhand, backhand, backhand. You can also hit it in a reverse. See, thrust, one, two, three, four, this way versus this way. See, I can hit the one like a thrust, or I can hit the one this way. You can hit it coming up or coming up like that. So it's like a, a forehand rotation, a backhand rotation, a forehand rotation with the edge forward, a forehand rotation with the back of the object here this way. And then Floretti is just doing that in groups of two typically. So I'll go one to one, two to two, horizontal to horizontal, etc., etc., etc. And you might even try it on the other hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Okay, so Floretti is really good because we're not going to be hitting heavy bags. We're going to be using it for self-defense. And imagine if you just strike the hand, you're not going to get caught up too much on just nicking the hand. So your Floretti can go anywhere. I, I am going one to one right now, but I could go like one to horizontal, one to kneecap, shin bone. You can vary the target a lot. Uh, in fact, the first motion, it might be a fake or it might be what we call like a stick rack. That means that you intend to hit the object this way, but when you arrive and they defend it, you flip it over into a thrust because that will travel further than when you're doing just a simple slashing forehand. So Floretti a lot of time is to defang the snake, to hit the limb and then the body, or maybe they got a good mill range block on it. And now the Floretti is gonna hit the hand itself. And then you're gonna come back with a power blow or a follow up after that. So don't be too concerned. It's a little difficult to hit the heavy bag with these. That's why a lot of times you do the circular hitting on the heavy bag to really develop the form and the wrist. Or you might prefer to do the redondo on the heavy bag because the slash is just gonna help you use that equipment. But when it's one-on-one -on -one with a person, you'll find that that's, that doesn't really come into play because of the soft, fleshy part of the body, right? It's much easier to hit a human on the knuckle and have it disappear than it is to convince your heavy bag to 
stop standing right where it is, right? They're usually chained down. So one more time, uh, I gave you guys the list for Tabak Tayo, but the Floretti lines, you wanna have a forehand, a high backhand, a midline, midline on the other side, diagonal up and diagonal up here. And then just look to combine it with everything that we've been doing so far, right? And you'll be on your way. All right, Warriors, if this is your first time here at the channel, really appreciate you guys watching, commenting, giving us feedback. It's been a really positive experience being out here, uh, just kind of handing out material ever since everybody went into lockdown and give me a chance to share along with my other colleagues at the Warriors Academy in Portland, Oregon. And uh, just really appreciate you guys being so supportive and coming out all the time and new subscribers every day. So if you haven't yet, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. Give us a share, give us a shout, and uh, throw your questions our way. Um, takes a lot of creativity. I'm just kind of going through pieces of the curriculum that's on my mind that I'm enjoying. Uh, but if you guys want to see something, if you do want some knife work, or you have an example to go by, and uh, you want us to dig into it a little deeper, super happy to do that. I've been training since like the 1990s, and a bunch of my cohorts that run the academy with me, they've been training just about as long. So. There's a lot of good resources. We've got Gracie black belts under our wing, Muay Thai instruction, uh, all kinds of stuff. But uh, today was college. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Warriors, we'll see you next time. We're out.